Well, hi everybody. This is Angelo Kenyon of San Yurisha Ministries. I am Ministries is J. Jane to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And I chuckle because sometimes when I when I say is J. Jane, I, I remember where I got that from. I got that from <laughs> from Star Trek, and uh, it's kind of fitting because it was an episode that had to do with the Roman Empire that that this planet copied. The Roman Empire uh, a way of doing things, okay, and so that's where I get that from. I got that from 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 them actually, from a Star Trek episode. So it's kind of cute, you know. So I, so I incorporated it into as it, as it grew um, the ministry. I just wanted to give you uh, uh, you know a, a certainty of a, of a prologue. You know, and and little by little, it formulate it, and it's just it's just like it's so natural. It's just like flows. It's just like water when you turn on the faucet. You know, there it goes. You know, so when I open up my mouth, I just end up. Now, let's go, okay, to okay, John's gospel. Well, actually, this goes to um, you know, uh, the the royal scripture. The royal scripture, um, and I hope my baby doesn't cry uh, because, you know, she misses me and uh, from time to time. So it's very hard to do things when she cries because then I'm going to have to pick her up. So, you know, I just went to another room and so she doesn't see me. So hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, my wife will, will take care of her in the sense that my wife is not sleeping and then will breastfeed her or something like that and keep her appeased. But um, this is the royal principle, prime directive, okay, you understand what I'm saying? Verse of all scripture. This is a scripture of scriptures. And Peter takes this uh, scripture up at the day of 50, at the day of Pentecost, okay? He used the scripture, not the only scripture, but he used the scripture to prove, okay, all right, that the body of the Messiah, of the Mashiach, uh, was not destroyed. Number one, number two, that his soul wasn't destroyed because it wasn't even, forget about being, not even being destroyed, it wasn't even abandoned. You will not abandon my soul to Sheol. Well, let's check this out. <clears throat> and this is from the NASB, a very dependable uh, Bible, one of the most dependable and one of the most greatest Bibles ever made, you know, ever. I, I guess that's ad, ad, adjectival intensive, right? It's like double. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So this is a full Greek construction series, by the way. Okay. And in this series, we, we go into the Greek of every single topic that comes up by, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses. So by the time this is finished, God willing, I mean, there's so many scriptures and so many scriptures that we dealt with, you know, John 1, 1, John 1, 18, John uh, 20, 28. I mean, we dealt with several. And it's, I debate, you know, <clears throat> uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, some other new ones come into play. Okay. And I dealt with those. Well, and so, I mean, as you get yourself engaged in, in, in defending the truth against these cults and sects, you know what I'm saying? Then then um, new ones will pop up like mushrooms, you understand what I'm saying? Well, let's ask for the Lord's blessing upon this, uh, upon this uh, study today. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. We bless your holy name because it is great. You are great. So we just come uh, seeking your blessing. I, I just pray for the forgiveness of my sins and uh, for, for the cleansing of my sins <clears throat> by the blood of Jesus. And uh, so we come to you, you know, uh, thanking you for all things. And I just pray that you will, you know, uplift the study, uh, make it easy to understand, and uh, may people remember it and uh, glorify your, your holy name. And we just come to you, um, you know, seeking for you to open the heart of these people who have been deceived, and greatly so, uh, many, many times over. And some people, you know, want it to be so. Some people are seeking uh, for truth because they see, you know, differences between their pamphlets and magazines and tracts. Uh, when you compare that with the Bible, there it just doesn't square up. So we just pray in Jesus' name to to give them that elucidation, Lord. And uh, grant that they come out. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, 
Let's read this text. Psalm 16, verse 10. Quote, For you will not abandon, this is the Messiah speaking, abandon my soul to shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay or to see corruption, says another translation, probably the King James. You understand what I'm saying? So let's repeat this again. It's quite clear. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to, to uh, undergo decay. Well, first of all, this says, this talks about his soul, and then it talks about his body. Okay, Greek word soma. It's not in, in, in the Septuagint, but I'm just saying that's the Greek word for body. Skin is, uh, or flesh is sarx. Okay, and the, the, word in, in, in the words in Hebrew are or for skin. I mean, you could translate it like that, or uh, skin from or. And then basar, actually for, um, well, for body. Okay. Oh, flesh, you know, pick, take, you know, take your pick. But those are the two, those are the four, um, you know, basic words that come up too from Greek, uh, soma and sarx and or and basar, actually, okay, respectively. And this talks about two things. So let's break this, this, take this, this, you know, see the separation here. For you will, he's talking to the to the Father. For you, the Messiah, uh, is talking to the Father. For you will not. That's in the future tense. Okay, not that he did it already. Okay, this is in the future. Remember, David spoke hundreds of years before. Okay, all right, the crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It says over here, for you will not. Okay, uh, abandon my soul, and that's probably a move in, in, in Greek. We'll, we'll check it out to shield. So he was not with the father. Okay, I commit my my soul, uh, uh, father, in, into thy hands. I commit my my spirit. I mean, it, it doesn't mean that I was gonna that that they, they, they he said that I, I'm gonna go to you now. It doesn't mean that at all. He says that he entrusts his soul. Why? Why does he entrust his, uh, his soul? Well, because he knows he's not going to abandon his soul. I mean, the father is not going to leave his soul. He's not going to abandon the soul of his son in Sheol. And I remember what he said to the repentant uh, criminal in verse uh, 43 of chapter uh, 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 23 of the gospel Kata Lukan, the gospel according to Luke, which is uh, the, the favorite gospel of, um, um, of my wife, uh, Rita. She was reading it yesterday. It's morning time now here in the Philippines. I'm not a Filipino. I'm an American a citizen, but I relocated here in 2018. Now, um, it's telling you that his soul is very much alive. You know, you're not abandoned. If, listen, if you um, say to uh, someone. Okay, um, you're not gonna abandon my 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 soul here in this room, okay? Well, then you know he, he's gonna get you out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, it says over here for you will not abandon my soul. It doesn't say that you will destroy my soul and then you're gonna recreate it again. It doesn't say that. And if it did, okay, all right, we will agree with the witnesses. But there's no support for their doctrine of this you know of the destruction of the soul of Jesus anywhere in the Bible. It's just not there. They gotta, you know, create it, no pun intended, in their pamphlets, magazines, and tracks because they surely don't find as a matter of fact, they have to make a new tr a new um, translation. To deny the Trinity, and to deny the deity of Christ, and to not deny uh, this and that. And they have to make their own translation. And they did. Sleazy, cheesy, easy translation. When it deals with, uh, with the essentials of the historic Christian faith that was actually uh, hammered out by, um, I, I said in a study, hammered. 
<laughs> it wasn't hammered, but it was hammered out by B.B. Warfield and company. I mean, they worked it out. What are the six essentials of the historic Christian faith? I mean, well, this inspiration of scriptures. Oh, this, uh, the inspiration of the scriptures. Okay, inspiration. Right, that's number one. Number two, the birth of Christ, the virgin birth. Okay, and number three, the deity of Christ, that he's God. Okay, he's the God man, but he's God. And then the substitutionary uh, atonement work upon the cross. Okay, that's number four. Number five, the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Not that he was raised as a spirit creature, as Murray J. Harris says. Okay, who has a PhD in Greek. A wonderful Greek scholar. But this common mistake that people do that, that, oh, well, you know, well, he was raised. Because just because he can go through a door? Oh, well, he can go through a door. Well, now, now you know, he doesn't have a body. And come on. He didn't have a body when he was walking on water? Is that the deal? Huh? When he multiplied the bread? That was just a spirit doing that? Eh? Philip, you know, was caught uh, by the spirit, so he didn't have a body? Oh, but he appeared. Well, that's the same Greek word for Moses appearing uh, uh, well, to, to Pharaoh. Epipheme says, uh, says, <laughs> says, says uh, Norman Geisler in a brilliant, um, you know, um, you know uh, interview uh, done by uh, the Christian Research uh, Institute. Okay, I have that. I have that audio. I had it on YouTube. And for fear that it might be taken out, I, I took it out myself. I should have left it there. Uh, there was no complaints upon it, but I mean, you know, this guy James White, you know, uh, you know, didn't want everybody to know that Greg St Stafford beat him. Okay, actually beat him fair and square. Okay, a runny nose JW. I mean, beat you know the puffed up James White so badly in a debate. Well, of course he didn't want you know uh, me to have uh, his debate, and then. I won the battle. I contacted uh, YouTube and I said, well, they don't have the rights to uh, 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 that, that video, that debate. They don't have the rights to it. Now, they can have the rights in the future by paying for it, right? But it's up there anyway. Almost, almost 800,000 people saw uh, James White lose. Uh, to, to, it's not because he was wrong. It's just that he wasn't clothed with the power of God. That's number one. Number two, he didn't quote scriptures uh, uh, often enough. You know, you could, it's not in any order. He didn't have command of the biblical languages. Okay, all right. I mean, he wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And, and I mean, he didn't answer the question in John 17, 3. That's all. That's why he was. That's why, you know, I had to create a ministry. No pun intended. To create, create, create. I had to create this ministry uh, to get some stuff done. Okay. That's just the deal all across the board. Listen, I'm not a James and Knight. I just tell it the way it is. There are people who are James and Knight, so follow him to his death. But not me. When you lose, you lose, and you lose badly. You just, not, you just only lose. Is the Father the true God? Yes or no? He didn't answer the question. Just say yes and get on. As a matter of fact, just say, um, can you repeat that question again? Say it like, like three, four times, and you're going to waste about one minute off of the screen of Greg, Greg Stafford's time. I mean, just say, uh, I'm sorry, uh, what would you say? <laughs> you know, just waste time. But no. You know? And then and then he talks about Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, after the fact. He couldn't beat one, you know, right in front of your nose. You know? He was so puffed up about himself. And I'll get back to this. He was so puffed up. James White, I'm talking about. Dr. James White. You know what I'm saying? So puffed up about himself, about, you know. And the first thing he said, and God cooled the soup. After that fancy trans, uh, translation, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, um, introduction. And in the introduction, in the beginning part, he said, way in the beginning part, he said, well, you know, I got these sunglasses for you guys because this has been, it's been detected or whatever the case may be that the sunlight, you know, off the camera, you know, you know, when you're looking at me, yeah, because probably because you're bald. That's why. Okay. <laughs> sunlight is flashing off your head. It does damage to your eyes if you don't have these sunglasses because, you know, the, you know, when you're looking at my debates, I wonder why. Maybe you lose so much, you know, people go blind. Okay? So let's do it. All right, let's get back to the Psalm 16, verse 10. Okay? And it says over here, it says, For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. 
So he tells you exactly where he was going to go. And actually, it was Paradiso. And that's in the dates of case, Paradise. Okay, all right. And he said that to the reprinted uh, criminal in Luke chapter 23, verse 43, all across the board. Okay? And he said, today. What I'm telling you, I'm telling you today? No, 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 no. Why, why, would he, why would he waste one of his precious words on the cross? He knows he's talking to him today. So why he's going to tell the reprinted criminal, you know, what I'm telling you, I'm telling you today, comma. No, it doesn't go like that, okay? Jesus doesn't waste words like that, okay? He usually didn't speak like that. Only like around like Luke 4 and maybe a couple of other passages that said, today this is fulfilled in your ears. But it's, no, it's not a necessity to say, today I'm speaking to you. You don't talk to somebody in their face and say, you know, I'm, what I'm telling you, I don't say to my wife, honey, you know, I'm talking to you today. It's ridiculous. Oh, um, honey, I'm telling you today that I would like to eat now. It's ridiculous. It's not necessary. It's not. And it didn't happen. But they change and, you know, and monkey around with the Bible. They put the comma over here, put the comma over there, put the comma over here, put the comma, you know, uh, a little bit toward the end of uh, verse 3 of chapter uh, 1 of John to hook it up with the first part of uh, uh, verse 4. You know, that's just what they do. They have to do it because they don't have any, they don't have any, they don't have any, you know, proof for their doctrine. So they have to monkey with the Bible. And these are the witnesses. They have to monkey around with magic wheat and corn, promising you that, you know, uh, it's going to grow to five times as uh, faster as magic wheat and corn. And he lied. Russell. Then he went on a world, you know, wide tour. He thought I was, he, he, he thought he was in Gilligan's Island. He lied. He predicted dates along with Rutherford. You understand what I'm saying? You know, about the supposed uh, coming of the Lord. They lied. They said that nobody was going to go to the moon. And then 24 people did. So they lied. Right? The prophet of God. They said there was a prophet of God in 1972 on April Fool's Day. I told you right there. You know, Deuteronomy 13, 18. If a prophet, uh, you know, if a, if a, a prophecy of a prophet doesn't come to pass, well, then he's a false prophet. You're not to fear him. That's all. It's a false prophet. False prophet. <laughs> Is that? Forgetting my English here in the Philippines. You will not abandon my soul to shield. So he didn't ascend to the Father. He even said so. Let's go. Let's go there. Now, let's maintain this thought, though. Okay, for you will not abandon my soul to shield. You know, so I want to say, no, will you, in a future tense, will you allow your Holy One, okay, all right, Holy One, that's the Messiah, to undergo decay, a corruption. So if his body was destroyed, it went through decay. It went through destruction, corruption, or whatever you want to call it. So the Watchtower <coughs> lied. That's all. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's what the Watchtower does. They <clears throat> lied. The Great Pyramid of Egypt is on par with the Bible. Rutherford even rejected that. The punk that he was, he rejected that of Russell. But then he does something even probably even, maybe not even worse, because it has to do with the Bible. And the Great Pyramid of Egypt is on par with the Bible. I mean, you can't get worse than that. But this is close. This almost takes the cigar. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are going to return? Really? I don't see that in the book of Revelation. I don't see that in um, chapter 9 or chapter 17 of Luke and Matthew. I don't see that, you know, Elijah will, will come back and restore things. You know, Jesus said. I don't see that, you know, Abraham is going to restore things. Or Isaac is going to restore things. Or <laughs> Jacob. I don't see that. But then he made a, 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 man, a mansion called Beth Serim. Okay, Beth means house and Serim is in the plural in Hebrew, means princes. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? The house of the princes, really? But he lived in it. Where's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Where? He died of cancer. 1941, and then the Jehovah's Witness organization sold it secretly from the witnesses. There you go. He lied. So can we really trust them when it comes to, you know, that, you know, Jesus was only resurrected in his spirit state? Come on. They lied about everything. They're probably lying about this. And they, ah. 
Uh, before we go on, for you will not abandon my soul uh, to Sheol. So he didn't go to the Father. He went to Sheol. And we saw what he was doing in Sheol. We're going to see that again. He was pro uh, making, you know, making proclamation, proclaiming uh, the truth, the gospel to the spirits who are in, okay, Fulake, who are in prison. Okay? The spirits that were disobedient at the times of Noah, it says. The sexy and sassy Jehovah's Witness, okay, Mark from Missouri, is a great friend, he's a great buddy, he's a great pal. But that's not the that's not the issue. That's not the issue. The friendship is not the issue. The doctrine stinks. That's the issue. It stinks to high heaven. I mean, it's just past, you know, uh, uh, Babel, or whatever you want to call it. Okay? That's just it. It stinks, uh, you know, <laughs> beyond that tower. Okay, that, that I wonder if it fell. I mean, it has to have fallen. I mean, in Iraq, there's a big hole that could have been the foundation for, for the Tower of Babel, though. Fell. God hates some towers. Anyway. I'm just saying. Going to build to the sky? God's going to knock it down? Oh, we got something so big, so wonderful, so great. Boom, down it goes. That's just all there is to it. Been doing that since, since Genesis. The tower. Ah, watchtower. It looks like Burger King. It really does. Just paint it white and it'll look like a Burger King castle. Or, you know, the witch, the, the witch's castle from the Wizard of Oz. Strutting her stuff, going around in circles. It's just all there is to it. I'm just saying, am I, am I being, you know, naughty or being nice? Uh, okay, so it says over here, will you, and then you will, uh, you will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. So it's talking about the soul of Christ and the body of Christ in the same verse. Okay, the same verse. You get everything over here. You get uh, a confirmation that the soul of Jesus was not destroyed, okay, and it was not abandoned. You get that, number one, number two. You get that the body of Christ was not evaporated or annihilated or anything like that. It was not being held in some sort of memorial or turned to vapors of gas, just like they said. Where are the scriptures? Where are the scriptures that indicate that? None. They have to make it up in their pamphlets and magazines. But that's not on par with the Bible. So why listen to them? You understand? The sign of the Son of Man. Ah, he's going to come invisibly. So, so what? What Bible said that he was going to come invisibly? Arata and Parousia doesn't appear okay, together anywhere in Greek. In no Greek literature. None, I challenge you. Plato, Socrates. I mean, I don't, I don't see it. Kenefin. I don't see any of his writings. Arata Parousia, anywhere. I'm just saying. Coming a presence? Okay, fine. I can deal with that. So what? The Apostle Paul was going to make a parousia, okay? <laughs> he says that in the book of Philippians. So he's going to come invi invisibly? I don't see other, other, the Greek word aratas uh, found with uh, parousia anywhere. I see aratas for, for God being invisible. I see uh, aratas for the earth being invisible under the element of water. I see that around what? Verse what? What? Verse 2? Of Genesis, chapter 1, something like that. You're not going to see Aratas and Parousia coming together, back to back in the belly to belly, like John Sterling likes to say at the New York Yankees. I don't see it. So they lied. They're going to make an invisible coming. They're just, you know, trying to, re you know, uh, you know, hide their rears, okay, all right, behind the fact that they lied again about the coming of Christ. Oh, 1914, it didn't come. The 144,000. Oh, really? They're all dead. And if they're not, they're hanging by a thread. So they lied. All this to it. Well, <clears throat> I mean, that's just all there is to it, though. Let's look at this, okay? I hope the Greek situation has this. I, I Probably they'll, they'll have this, um, I, meaning that I hope they have it in the same, you know, but I think it's going to be in Psalm 15, actually, verse 10. So let's kind of cheat a little bit and anticipate that it's not going to be aligned. It's not going to be like 16, 16, like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's some, you know, the Psalm of the Weddings in Psalm 44. It's not in Psalm 45, like the, the, the Hebrew text and the English text, I think. You know what I'm saying? All right, so let's check the, what's this? Okay, so um, Ecclesiastes. Okay, 
and by the way, it says over here in verse 7 in, in Greek that the, that the soul returns to God, tantheon, right? And then you see in verse 23, chapter 1 of Philippians, and I went through uh, this. I should just make an independent study on all the Greek words. That the, the uh, and, you know, to the part and be with Christ. So I guess Christ is tantheon. You see? There you go. I'm not saying that he's the father. The persons are not equal to each other, but the nature is. And that's why you have theos in the predicate position. It's just like a reverse volume control on your cell phone. Okay? You know, when, when you put the volume control, you know, you, you, when you go to the right, it gets stronger. But the reverse is true in Greek. When it gets, uh, you know, to the beginning of the, of the uh, you know, before the verb, in the beginning of the sentence like that, it's very strong. The emphasis is very great that Lagos is God. And since it's definite by nature, no pun intended, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, you know, in the predicate position. An Amy word is present there in the text. You understand what I mean? Well, then uh, Theos becomes definite by nature. And Dan Wallace, a famous Greek scholar, who forgot all his Greek and then was reborn again in Greek. Okay, this time I was born again twice, I guess. Okay, born again the first time, you know, and then born again again. <laughs> this is it. He forgot all his Greek. Goodness gracious. I don't know which was better, the, 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 the first part or the latter part, you know. I wish I could forget all my Greek and become like that. Anyway, so we're just little guys over here, but that's just the deal. The first shall be first, and the last, and the last shall be first. But it says over here that the spirit returns to God. And it says, uh, since I have it there, you know, I'll discuss it, you know, just briefly, so you can see it for yourselves. Those who, those of you who know Greek, and those of you who do don't, don't worry about it. You will. And it says, um, "Tanteon" over here, in the second to last line, "Tanteon," "Pros Tanteon." And, and by the way, a Dokken is here in the text. You see a Dokken over there? Epsilon, Delta, Omega, Kappa, Epsilon, Nu. The Nu looks like a V, you know. Don't pay attention to that. It's not, that's not a V. That's an N, okay? There's no V-looking letter in Greek. None. None whatsoever, okay? No V-looking letter in Greek. None. Unless you want to see, you know, the capital Upsilon, okay, it's a V-looking letter, okay, I take that back, but it's more like a Y-looking letter than, than a V, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> right, parakisma is not even in the, in, the, in, the, in the collection of letters anymore, it had to do with pregnancy, though. No wonder God dropped it off, <laughs> he dropped it off himself, he's not going to say I'm the beginning and the, preg and the pregnancy, you know. You know, Alpha has to do with rising. You know? So, I mean, you know. Patechisma was the last letter in the Greek alphabet, but not, not at the time of John. That was dropped off. Thank God. All right. It looked like a flying... So it looked like a flying P, by the way. Like, uh, you know, the letter P, but just flying like a, like a boomerang. That's what it looked like. That's, that's what I remember uh, Patechisma looking like a little bit. Everything means something. You know what I'm saying? It means something. It's just like, uh, you know, the gamma looks like the, you know, part of a plant, you know, stem, you know, like beginning like that. You know what I mean? No pun intended. Genesis. Gamma. Capital gamma, by the way. Gamma, gamma, whatever you want to call it. All right, Tanteon. Just tell the witnesses that, you know, verse 7 tells you where the spirit is going to go. It's not going to go where the dust goes. It's not going to go to the, it's not going to go, let me see over here. Where's the, where's the, what's the construction? For uh, oh, it says over here attain gain the same construction found and recorded for you know the earth in Genesis uh, one one in this of two agent, by the way attain gain okay all right and arche epoyas and hate as tanuranan I don't know what's in the singular but anyway you know kai tain gain same construction the spirit wasn't gonna go down there the dust will okay that's just it. And you see that recorded, I believe, in verse 7 of chapter 2, right? Or verse 11 or something like that of Genesis? I have to check that out again. But anyway, um, we're just going to go to the Greek Septuagint, and we're just going to talk about 
Okay, all right. I, I see uh, Samuel there. And Samuel, one, uh, one, uh, Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 28 talks about the witch of Endor, okay, disturbing, okay, all right, uh, uh, Samuel, Samuel. So he wasn't dead. He was in Sheol also. Uh, I thought so, though. I thought so. You see? So all these witnesses, what? Lied. Saying that the soul is destroyed and all this stuff. It's not destroyed. <clears throat> That's what Satan wants you to believe. That it's destroyed. You know what I'm saying? But it won't be destroyed. It won't be destroyed at all. And if you're talking about destruction, in a sense that you're going to, you you know, your, your, um, your, your lifestyle is going to be shattered, well, there you go. Okay. Also, people even say it today. Oh, my life was shattered because she left or oh, whatever is the case may be. Well, it doesn't mean that you were not annihilated. Okay, it's just, it's just, it's just your life was destroyed. Maybe good riddance anyway, you know what I'm saying? All right. Well, let me go to Psalm, Psalm though. Why am, I, why am I going to Ecclesiastes? Okay, Psalm, and I'll guess, I'm going to guess is, it, is, is Psalm 16, okay, 16. So let's see, he's poked a bear here, 16, verse 10, because I think I saw that before. You see? There it goes, you see? It's a Psalm before. It doesn't coincide. Not all the time. All right, so it says over here, it says, uh, Hati, uh, Uch, and that's the negative there in Greek. It says, uh E kata alepses, lepses, tain psukain, that's the word for soul there, mu, that's my, okay, into, and that's ace, that's a preposition, okay, um, hadain, Hades, okay, it's not heaven. Not Uranan, not the third heaven anyway. It's Hadain. Into Hadain. Nor Ude, okay, uh, Dulces, Atan, you see, it says over here, I'm using a magnifying glass, Asian, okay, Su, let's see, you, uh, Eden. Okay, and that's uh, C, basically. The uh, Saran, and that's the decay. So, it's not a transliteration of Sheol there. You know, Sheol and then uh, Sheol. You know, like, let's say, uh, well, there's no SH in, in, in Greek, though. So that's gonna, they're going to have to say like a transliteration for that will be like uh, a seol or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because um, Samuel is not, it's not like, uh, I think it's just with an S, a sigma. I, I, I have to check that out. But it's not Shami, Sham, Shamuel, you know, like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not, you know, there's no SH letter in, in, in Greek. You got that in Hebrew, the sheen or the shin or whatever you want to call it. Okay, you got that. Mr. Spock, Leonard Nimoy, you know, Leonard Nimoy, who played Mr. Spock on Star Trek, he was a Jew, and he said it's Sheen, or, or um, which one are you sending me see? Uh, Shin, or Sin, you know, the S-H or the, or the S. I don't think he said Sheen or Seen, okay? He did not say that, he did not say it like that. Different strokes for different folks, uh, different dialects, you understand what I'm saying? Now, um, let's see. So, we're going to check, I have to check out the Hebrew because um, it's not going to have a transliteration there. Now, now, wait a minute. Let me, let me look at the future tenses, though. I hope I have it back. I want to see future tenses, though. Will, 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 will. All across the board here. Oh, man. Let's see. 
<sighs> um, I guess this is this right here. Verse 10, Ahati Uk, um, And I think the C there uh, might be indicator of the future tense there. Um, and then, and then, um, the so, uh, tame, psukane, mu, and that's my. And that's in the genitive uh, singular. Okay? No, no, no gender. So I think it's in the word uh, egg, egg ka, ta, lipsis. Uh, I think the the future tense form it is in psi there, in psi. Okay, that's what I think that is. Let me see. Uh, in here, nor ude. And then in the word. Um, Doses, then uh, the, the sigma, I think the f future tense form it is, if it is in a word, uh, doses here. Okay, sigma. Okay, so you have you have a, the, the future tense form of uh, sigma pointing out the future in this word over here, doses. Okay, tan, uh, 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 tan over here, hoisian. Uh, su of you of of uh, your okay and that's a uh, second person personal pronoun from the uh, ego part of the paradigm su su soy se idain okay diar uh, taran and that's uh, decay the last word is decay so that so that's in the future okay that's in the future and I give you an indication of that. How a word could be in the future tense by one little uh, letter. I, I mean the stem, of course, the stem. The, the you know, that that'll be a clue, right? Well, let's get that. Okay, because you know Jehovah's Witnesses, they like to use uh, Micah chapter five around verse five or four in English, and it's in verse three in Greek. That you know he has a god, and it prophesies that he has a god, or it tells you that he has a god. But that's in the future tense. He will stand. You understand what I'm saying? It's not for now. Now where's that at? This in um, Micah. Let me get Micah over here. Micah, Song of Solomon, Jeremiah, and that's just the deal. Daniel, Joel, Obadiah, uh, Micah, right here. Okay, let's poke the bear there. Chapter 5 and verse 3, I believe it was. I well, hope I'm right. I haven't seen it in a while. Oh, I saw it last week or whatever it was. Okay, here it goes. And he will stand that he will, is from the context. You're not going to get he from the word itself. You got to get that, you know, we're talking about the Messiah. Say so he, okay. Kai, I mean, it's not like, um, you know, uh, a cola, you know, her voice. You know what I'm saying? And you see the, the hey, and that's an indication of the feminine. It's not going to work like that in Greek, okay, when verbs are concerned. Okay, you're not going to get any gender out of that. You see, you have to get that from the noun, you have to get that from the or. If it's not there, you have to get that from the context. You understand what I'm saying? So, see over here. But, and the hey, like, you know, ish for, for man in Hebrew, and then Adam also, but ish man and then haisha okay uh the the the, the he haisha or isha the he at the end will tell you that that word is is in the feminine construction okay but that's a noun but then the verb can do it by you um doing the same thing cola okay uh you know or or another uh you know um word uh she cries will be that having that hey okay and you see that in um chapter eight of uh proverbs indicating that, 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 that that's not talking about the messiah that's not talking about lagos that he was created uh he came forth no because it's feminine and lagos is is you know that's masculine you understand what i'm saying 
even though the word word could be uh, uh, feminine in some uh, languages. So you're going to have to insert not, not word there in John 1.1 1, 1, all across the board. You're going to have to put Jesus there. Okay. Now, so let's go. It says over here, stesetai uh, for um, will stand. And the sigma in the middle of the stem in a connecting vowel there, uh, not the first uh, sigma or S, but the second sigma, the, the first, uh, the fourth letter, I should say, in his word, is, is, is right in the middle of the connecting vowel and the stem. Well, I mean, the, well, the, 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 the alpha turned into an eta, but the, um, but the, the future tense form is, is there. It's telling you that this is going to be in the future. That's how the Greeks form the future. Not by adding a word will here, but by uh, adding a sigma using a future tense stem, okay, and then uh, t a future tense formative, which is the sigma. And I think it is, and a lot of people don't bring this up in their tutorials because sigma means to synchronize. That's what it means. That's what it actually means. And then after the tense formative, you have a connecting vowel, okay, connecting the sigma to the tau of the personal ending, tie. Okay, stesetai. So you have the stem or the root of the verb. Okay, stay here anyway. And then you have a t uh, tense formative. Okay, uh, a letter that will form the future tense, the sigma. And then you have an epsilon, just a connecting vowel, connecting the sigma to the next letter, tau. Now they're called tough in the personal ending, tai. My side, tai, right? There you go. So that's in the future. So it's just uh, bring them to... Okay, to um, to this verse, I believe is in verse four um, that he will stand. And so that's gonna be um, uh, and also bring him to a uh, verse uh, eight, chapter three about the my God business. Okay, that you know he he's he's a creature because he has a God. Well, Zechariah uh, chapter three, verse eight, he has a God according to servanthood. Okay. Tan Dulan is there, uh, um, my servant. He's my my servant. Let me see what I can do here. Um, let me get to the Hebrew of uh, Psalm 16, verse 10. So I guess it's, we could stay with Psalm 16, verse 10 today. You know, we'll check out some things because this is running a little bit late. <clears throat> so... Um, Let's uh let's go to uh let's go to Micah. Okay. The Proverbs, the Jeremiah, the Hosea, Amos, and Micah's right here. Okay, so let's go there. And let's look at the English text. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Let me let me actually make this a little bit more more lighter. It's getting it's getting dark, but no, I can't do nothing about it. Can I do something about that? No. I don't know why. Okay, so Micah, a chapter five, and let's just go like this anyway. And I think it's the verses verse four, the the one they like to give that he has he has a God. Be careful with that. The answer is in Zechariah chapter three verse eight, and also in this in this in this chapter. Remember that 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 um, uh, verse two of Micah chapter five comes before the verse that they talk about. The birth of Christ comes before he has a God in verse whatever. Now this is the this is wait a minute for a second over here. It says, uh, this one will be, wait a minute for a second. Okay, here, I think it's verse 4. And he will, uh, and he will arise, okay? Let's stand arise. And he will arise and a shepherd, okay, his flock. See the future there? In the, uh, in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, okay, and they, etc., etc., etc. But see, the Jehovah's Witnesses like to use verse four, so give him verse uh, three in the Greek Septuagint, um, you know, and say, uh, the setai, 
Okay, Stasetai is spelled out uh, Sigma, Tau, Eta, Sigma, Epsilon, Tau, Alpha, uh, Iota. That's in the future. And the English-speaking people, we like to uh, uh, form the future by adding the word will. And he will, you see? It's not, it's not that he has a God at the time of Micah. Will, that's in the future. And he will. There's a prophecy about the Messiah. He wasn't, and say so you could say this also, he wasn't born in Bethlehem at the time of, uh, of, of, of the prophecy of Micah. He wasn't born there in Bethlehem. It's in the future. So he doesn't have a God until he's born. Okay? Is that clear? And he will arise and shepherd, okay, his flock in the strength of the Lord, okay, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they will, look at this, they will, okay, uh, remain, okay, because at that time he will, okay, come on, be great uh, to the ends of the earth. But you see will like two or three times here. It's the future. It doesn't have a God at the time of Micah. It doesn't say anarchy. Okay. A poison. It doesn't say anarchy. Okay. All right. Ain ha huyas. Or ain ha angalas. Or ain ha mikael. Or anarchy. Again, it's a halagas. It would be. Back to the nominative, you know. Okay, doesn't say enarche in ha enarche in ha lagas kai ha lagas in pras tante an ala. Let me see what it be. Um, uh, in uh, ha lagas. Um, let me see, but. Okay, so it'll be, uh, let me see, Allah, uh, Ha, Lagas, Ain, uh, Tu Theo, or just Theo. But uh, the word was of God. Or the word had a God. How about that? Even be worse. All right, so let's get back to the Hebrew, okay, of, um, well, not back because we didn't get to it, okay, you understand? Well, let's get to that word sheol. <clears throat> okay, I don't really like this app too much because it really doesn't have a lot of, uh, of uh, like parsing and stuff. So let's, but let's get there anyway. All right. So let's see. We're in Genesis. Okay. I mean, why doesn't it? Um, okay. So it's over there. Genesis. Um, uh, Psalms over here, okay, and then it'll be 16, definitely be 16, it's not like the Greek Septuagint is, you know, out of order, here anyway, okay, and I put the print bigger, so that's good, so let's go to verse 10, which is almost the last one, so let's go all the way to the last one, and that's 11 there, okay, all right, That's verse 9. And this is verse 10 right here. It's a shield right there. Let me just go back a little bit. It's a shield right there. So he was in shield. Okay? He wasn't in heaven. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so it's a little bit right over here. And this is verse 10 right here. It says, therefore, okay, it says, therefore, um, it says, is glad, okay, and that's, uh, sa, sa, sam, samach, let me see the diacritics, I can't see the diacritics here, okay, samach, 
Okay, so that's uh, scene. That's an S right here because of the scene. Of the scene dot is set toward the upper left hand corner, and then you have the comments underneath it. So that looks like a T, but it's not a T. It's an A class, like in the word father. So sa. That's the first syllable, and then you have the mem. Just just pretend that's a, like a. You know these symbols mean something, but let's just pretend that's a half a M. And then you have the patach underneath that. Okay, so that's an A class, like in the word hat. There is no distinct distinction in modern uh, Hebrew, in, in, in you know, in, in some cases, some circles, I should say. Uh, Shamach. Okay, in the in the, the the third letter. Remember, you read Hebrew from uh, right to left, not like Greek from left to right. Um, that's a chet, and that's a ch. That's a guttural. So um, shamach. Okay, and that's uh, glad, but that's not really that's imp that was important for the Messiah. My heart, okay. So this concert, good. my baby's gonna cry. She's gonna she's gonna break out. My glory. Let me see. Also, oh, see. Uh, says my flesh, and that's uh, uh, basari. Basari, the E sound at the end, you know, have that vowel at the end, like, you know, my God, you know, you know, o Ori, you know, it's the same thing, showing possession. Bait, Sin, Resh, and Yod. The Yod is acting like a vowel there. Shall rest, okay, in hope. Shall rest in hope for, okay. <coughs> and it's a mixture. It's a mixture between uh, Psalm 9 and 10, though. Well, let's, let's see. For not, and that's a Hebrew negative law, uh, do leave, okay. Let's see over here. My soul, and that's, um, let me see here. Make it more bigger for me because I'm using a magnifying glass. Okay. Nafshi. Okay, nafshi. My. Okay, na. Uh, na. Okay, not she. Spell out noon, pay, sheen, and then yod. To shield. Let me see. You have a. You have a. You have over here. Li is a leash. O, leash o. It says over here, leash o. Or uh, li sheol. <laughs> I forgot how how you say it though. If you say li, uh, or leash. So I forgot that. You see, that's why you gotta read Hebrew from time to time. You forget. It's like it's like it's like karate for God's sakes. Okay, but the letters are okay. Alamet sheen aleph. Uh, Vav and then Lamed Okay <clears throat> But I, I, For me it would be Leash O Leash O From Sheol So if you trace this it's going to be Let me see how they will break it up in this app though So I can relearn how to How to say it In this app over here will break up the syllables let me see if I was right. I'll, I'll guess that it was leash o, but let's see. Let's see. So we're, we're learning together here because I forgot how to say that. I think to, to me it was leash o, but let's, let's see that. Or leash o, leash, but I think it's leash o, but let's see. I could be wrong. Let's check that out. And uh, see Psalm here, Psalms. Okay, Psalm, 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 Psalm 16. 
Psalm 16. Psalm 16 and verse 10. Okay, so that's it right there because it's 11 verses to that psalm, see? So let's check it out. It says, let me see. You allow, well, okay, holy one. No, that's the second part of it. Um, my soul, Sheol. Let's check it out. So they put it at... um. Let me see how they put it, though. They should break up the syllable. Leash. You see? Yeah, so also I was right. Leash. Oh. So leash is together. Leash is together. Leash. Oh. It's kind of strange because we, we all know it's shield. So leash. Oh. Very important to, to, to check out those two dots underneath the, the, the sheen there. That, you know, it, basically it makes it one syllable. But, but I forgot about that. But leash O, so that's confirmed. Leash O. From Sheol. Okay. In Sheol, not, okay, it says over here, low. Okay, and... Um, And the will you allow, and that's uh, but where's abandoned though? My soul in shield, not okay. And let me see if abandoned was in the other word. You so you will. Oh, it's getting it's getting dark here though. It says it's for not, and that's low again. Okay, uh, you will leave. Okay, uh, my soul. Okay, my soul, and the new is with that, it's the same syllable, the, the, the new and the pay, the noon I should say in the pay, it's noon in, in Hebrew, N-O-O-N, or N-U-N, the N, is, it's not new, it's, it's noon. In Sheol, not, and that's low again. You allow, okay, Holy One, your, and it says over here, hello, hon, is that you? To see, it says over here, and corruption is shachat. Let's check that out. It's very important right here. It's talking about the body of Christ who will not see shachat. Okay, so that's sheen with the kamet, so that's sha. And then after that, I'm right under the word corruption, okay? Remember you read Hebrew from right to left. Now there's a letter, it looks like a W. It's not a W, it's an SH because of the dot right above the right upper corner, okay? If it was above the upper left corner that would be an s but since it's above the upper right corner it's an sh that's a sheen dot if it was in the other side it'll be a scene dot okay so this this letter is called shin or or uh shin sheen or shin okay so sha and then you have the chet with the patach underneath it looks like a minus sign that's an a class so if you're looking at something that looks like a T, a little tiny T underneath a consonant, that's an A-class like in Father, in Biblical Hebrew. If you see a, uh, a line underneath a consonant, that's an uh, A-class, but like in the word hat. So, so far you have shacha, and then you have a T, okay, a letter, next to the two dots. You see those two big fat dots? separating, um, uh, I believe, uh, the verse from the upcoming verse, this verse from the upcoming verse. Well, those two letters look alike, right? The, the CH in the middle of the, of the word, chet, it looks different from the tau, doesn't it? Well, how can you tell it apart? Well, the tau has a foot. The tau has a foot. That's the only way you could tell it apart. The tau has a foot. Okay, that's it. 
the tile has a foot in, um, and that's the only way you can tell it apart. One is a CH, the chet, and one is a tau, uh, a T. Okay? Shachat. He will not see shachat. Okay? And he went to Sheol. Okay? I don't see the word abandoned here, though. It says uh, for not, and that's the Hebrew word low. And that's key for four. For not. Okay, you will leave. Okay, you will leave. My soul. Well, you, 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 you it's abandon. This is in the word. Okay, um, leave. You will leave. And then it has the Hebrew negative low. So that's that's abandon means to, to leave, right? <laughs> okay, to leave. Uh, someone, someplace, abandon. Okay, you will leave, but then it has the Hebrew uh, negative law here, spelled out lambda with an O class, holem O class, and then an aleph. Okay, low, my Hebrew is returning uh, to me right here, you know. I'm sorry about the animals in the background, uh, guys. I'm in the Philippines, by the way. Okay, <laughs> it's early in the morning, the chickens and roosters and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying? And then so. Not, you will leave. So that's uh, not abandoned. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Well, I'm going to eat my breakfast now, guys. I think this, this was long enough. And I hope I was still recording. It will be a shame if it didn't. But that's it right there. So what can you say about this study? Well... What you can bring out of this study is that his soul wasn't abandoned. That's number one, number two. His flesh did not see corruption. So he was raised, Jesus Christ, our Lord, was raised in the same body that he had as a birthday suit. That's all there is to it. Okay? I remember he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up again. That it is very important. Okay? And you have uh, Norman Geisler used to call it numer a numerical identity. Okay, and um, so that's just it. So remember, that's not the only scripture that says that he was going to raise his own body from the dead. Of course, the Father and the Holy Spirit have part of that also. But um, you know, I have the power to 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 lay it down, his life. I have power to take it up again. I have received this commandment from my father. So the father commanded Jesus to raise himself up from the dead. Now, if he was still alive in the spirit, oh, well, that spirit of Jesus could raise his body from the dead. It's not impossible, like Mark from Missouri, the JW, uh, said, okay, that that would be an impossibility to raise himself up if he was dead. But if his soul was still alive and the body is dead, well, there's a great possibility. As a matter of fact, my wife was reading the resurrection chapter yesterday of John's gospel, okay, chapter 20. And what she said when she finished that, our God is very powerful. This is Angelo Quinone is giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember you said our God is very powerful when you were reading the resurrection chapter yesterday of John? Right, my love? You know? Yeah, she's sleepy, you know, she just got up from, <laughs> from bed. <laughs> But she said when she read the resurrection chapter of Jesus, our God is very powerful. That's what she said. And he can do it. He can do it. And he did. As Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now. It's right here. Take care.